Welcome back to another gift ideas tutorial part of this series that I'm doing all throughout November where I show you quick and easy knit and crochet projects that are perfect for gifting to friends and family hopefully in time for Christmas this year. So far we've done scarves and headwear and today we'll be doing gloves because honestly what is better than receiving handmade gloves? Like, that's so cute. As always, I will be providing measurements for each project so that you can follow along no matter what yarn you have or what needles and hooks you have available to you. Someone actually left a comment on one of my videos recently about sort of adapting one of the knit projects to crochet. And it made me realize that honestly, with the measurements that I give you, you can even knit the crochet projects or crochet the knit projects. And I actually really love that idea because it will get you to think more creatively and also it's great for problem solving. So if you like any of the knit projects but you don't knit you can absolutely do them with crochet as well but anyways let's start making some gloves whenever I'm looking for like a quick and easy crochet project I always end up making granny squares and sometimes I feel like I'm cheating a little bit but they exist for a reason so you might have guessed it but we will be making granny square fingerless gloves these are really great for using up scrap yarn if you have any yarn left over from previous projects or if you have made any of the tutorials that I have shown you so far I feel like you can get really creative with the color combos for this and I will also show you a really fun way to do ribbing. I've decided for this tutorial, I'm actually going to start by showing you the measurements of each project beforehand, just so you have a bit of context of what you're working on, what you're working towards, and just so that you can get your swatch and your measurements, your stitches, your cast on, so you can get all of that right from the get-go. The way these gloves are put together is by making two granny squares and adding these together through the join as you go method, and then you will simply be adding a short amount of ribbing at the top, a bit of a longer section of ribbing at the bottom, and a very slight section of ribbing just around the thumb. You want each of your squares to reach about four inches. If you're doing everything right, they are meant to be a square, so aim for four inches. Then the top ribbing will be about an inch, and the bottom ribbing about an inch and a half, and the ribbing around your finger will just be about like half an inch. You can follow these measurements with any kind of yarn or hook you have available. I will show you the yarn and hook that I am using, but it's absolutely fine to use different materials as long as you somewhat match the measurements. So you might end up creating more rows if you use a thinner yarn and a smaller hook, or you might end up doing less rows if you're using thicker yarn and a larger needle. It really doesn't matter, again, as long as you meet the measurements. I will be using a range of colours from the Hobby Fluffy Day acrylic yarn together with a 4mm hook. I really love this yarn, it's super fluffy and great for any type of like winter projects. You might also want to get some scissors and a measuring tape. So in order to make a granny square you're going to chain 4, slip stitch into the very first stitch of your chain. chain two, yarn over, and you're going to double crochet into the very middle of the circle that you've just created. You're then going to do another double crochet and this will count as your very first cluster of double crochets. Chain two and do another three double crochets into that same center. Chain two, three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets and this will make your very first row which consists of four clusters of three double crochets. Once you've reached your last double crochet, chain two and just kind of slip stitch into your first cluster. If you are changing colours before completing that slip stitch, you're going to want to cast on your second colour, do this just by creating a slip knot and you're going to add this slip knot onto your hook and complete the slip stitch with your second colour. The way that I then like to weave in my colours is I kind of just fold over my tail ends and as you're doing your chain two with your second colour, with each chain I like to wrap over the tail end of my second colour just to really secure that in. Before continuing your granny pattern, I then just take the tail end of my first colour and kind of wrap it around the gap that I've created, as well as feed it through the stitches of this cluster and then I fold it around the next gap as well. This just means your tail end is super, super secure and won't come undone.
You will then make two double crochets into your gap, you chain two, and do three more double crochets into that same gap. So this is how you create your corners. Once you've made your first corner, chain one and do three double crochets into your next gap, chain two and do three more double crochets into that same gap. And you're just going to continue this until you've made your way around. And this is how you've completed your second row. Now it's time to again change colors. So before completing my slip stitch, I'm just adding on my third color and completing the slip stitch with that. Again, I'm folding over all of my tail ends so with your third colour, complete your cluster by doing two double crochets into the gap. You then chain one and do three double crochets into your corner gap, chain two and do three more double crochets. You then chain one, you only do three double crochets into your middle gap, chain one and continue with making the next corner. And you're gonna just continue this same pattern for your fourth and final row. You can then just cut your yarn and tie in your end, then just work on creating your second granny square. But when you're doing your last row, come back to this video because as you're making your last row, we're actually connecting our squares together through a method that is called join as you go. So cast on your second color and make your way to your first corner. Once you've made the first cluster in your corner, only chain one and this is where you're gonna grab your second square and you're going to slip stitch into one of the corners of your previous square. Chain one, and do three more double crochets into the corner of the square that you're currently working on. And here you've made your first connect to the two squares. Chain one and slip stitch into the adjacent gap of the other square. After that, you're just gonna continue doing your cluster in your current square, chaining one and slip stitching into the adjacent gap of your previous square. When you get to your next corner, do your three double crochets, chain one, slip stitch into the gap of the corner of your other square, chain one more and do three double crochets into the same gap of the square that you're working on currently. And this is how the join as you method goes. You've just connected the first side. You will then just continue crocheting around the next side of your current square. We're not connecting anything here. But when you've reached the corner of this side, you then want to again slip stitch into the adjacent corner to attach the second side. Now, once you've done this corner, you are not going to connect the next gap. So do your three double crochets. chain one but do not slip stitch into the adjacent gap of your previous square and simply go into the next gap of your current square do your three double crochets and now again we're going to connect the adjacent corner so you're basically skipping one of the clusters or one of the gaps as this is where your thumb will need to go through later on then just continue making your way around the square and you can actually now see here where you've created that gap you can easily fit your thumb through do not cast off your yarn here because we're just going to continue our bottom ribbing and for this you're just going to create one row of half double crochets if it's easier for you to create the half double crochets you can turn around your work with mine i found it was just easier to slip my hook into the stitches this way if you have turned your work turn it back around and now this is where we're going to create our ribbing pattern. This ribbing method is called back post and front post half double crochets. So we're gonna stick with half double crochets, but instead of crocheting into the top stitches, we are actually going to crochet into the post or the thicker bits of your stitch, if that makes sense. So start by just chaining two, yarn over, and basically insert your hook into the first gap, go around the post and come back up the next gap yarn over and feed your yarn through as you would for a half double crochet and you've just created your first stitch yarn over and you're going to go into the back of your stitch come out with your crochet hook place your crochet hook over the post 
and go into the next gap, yarn over and feed your yarn through to complete your half double crochet. And this is how you crochet into the back or the front posts. I will link another video tutorial in the description box, just in case you want an even more detailed tutorial on how to make this kind of stitch. And then you're basically just continuing this pattern until your ribbing has reached about one and a half inches. You can then cast off here, cut off your yarn, and you've just completed the bottom ribbing. You can see here, it really is so effective and looks so cute. And you're essentially just going to do the same for the top, create one row of half double crochets and start making your front and back post half double crochets until your top ribbing has reached about an inch. Once you've done that, the same again for, for your thumb, cast on your yarn, do one row of half double crochets and however many rows it takes for you to reach about half an inch for your thumb ribbing. For me, this literally meant one row of back and front post half double crochets. And there you are, you can tie in all your loose ends, cut everything off, and you've finished your crochet fingerless gloves. These fingerless gloves really are the easiest gift project ever. And I feel like they're really easily personalized just by changing up the colors to whatever the person's aesthetic is. I actually had to make two different types of colorways just because I was using scrap yarn and I was kind of running out, but I still really love it. Like I love that they're not matching. I feel like it just, it looks so fun. And they do really keep you warm. They are still really practical because you can use your fingers. You can of course also extend the top ribbing to just cover your fingers a bit more, but that really is the fun of these projects. They are so adaptable. If anything, they're meant to just give you some inspiration of what you could be making and how easy it is to make gifts. Now moving on to our knit projects, we'll be making mittens. I've always held off wearing or making mittens just because they seem so impractical, but who needs practicality when you could wear cute little mittens instead? Since making my first pair, I've definitely been converted and I I will be making mittens in all types of colors and patterns. I was also surprised how easy they actually can be to make. I'm sure they can be much more complicated, but I found it really, really simple to make them. So these mittens are knit flat and then later on folded in half and sewn together along the edge. Just because I don't like knitting in the round when the round is so small, I feel like for me that leads to a lot of imperfections and inconsistencies in the tension. Projects like this probably are much better for using double pointed needles, but the projects I wanna show you are meant to be quick and easy and accessible for everyone. So I didn't really want to overcomplicate things and I know that not everyone would have double pointed needles necessarily. Like I mentioned before, the mittens are knit flat and they are eight inches wide and a total of 10 inches long. Now, as you can see, there are some slightly different sections for the thumb and also for the top of the hand. The thumb section needs to be about 2.5 inches from the bottom to where you're gonna start decreasing for the top of your hands. That needs to be about eight inches and then your decreases are done over two inches. As always, this can be achieved with any type of yarn and any kind of needles you have available to you. And you can use these calculations to figure out how many stitches to cast on and how much you will actually need to knit for each section as well. So I will be using the leader of the pack yarn from Hobbycraft and I'm kind of going for like a two-tone pattern for this. I'll be knitting with 4.5 millimeter needles. You will also need a crochet hook minus 3.5 millimeter just to later on seam the edges together. You're going to start off by creating a long tail cast on. So as you're creating your slip knot, make sure to leave a really long tail at the end. And then this is how you're creating a long tail cast. So hold the tail over your thumb and hold main strand of yarn over your index finger, sort of how I'm showing here. And then you're going to use your needle to go under the thumb yarn, over the index yarn, and then through the gap that your thumb creates. And that's pretty much how it's done. I will also link a video tutorial for this long tail cast on below if you'd like to spend a bit more time to really learn how to make this. I'm creating a bit of a pattern for my mittens. However, you can knit all of this in complete stockinette. You can knit this in just one color. But if you are looking to create the exact same one that I've made, I will show you how to create this pattern and also how I like to change my colors. So for my first four rows, I'm just knitting back and forth in stockinette. And then after four rows, it is time for me to change to my second color. So I'm just creating a slip knot with that color and adding this onto my left needle. And then for the first stitch, I'm combining the added yarn with my first stitch of the previous color together. And then I'm just knitting as normal for one row. Then I turn my work and it's time for the second row. And rather than purling this row, as you can see here, this is the purl side, I'm 
actually going to knit this row. So you can see here folding my yarn over and I'm knitting every single purl for the second row. As you can see here, this creates sort of a bump on the main part of your pattern as well. Then my third row, I'm going to knit again all the way through. And for my fourth row, I'm actually going to purl the row this time. And this sort of creates this pattern that I'm going for, for these mittens. Then when it's time to change colors again, I'm just going to bring forward my previous color. And when I'm knitting the first stitch, this is when I'm using my first color to complete this stitch. Once you've made your first stitch, pull on your second color just to make everything nice and tight. And also pull on the bottom of your work just to make sure that your tension isn't too tight. Continue knitting whatever pattern you're working on until you've reached four inches. And then it's time to cast on extra stitches for your thumb. Like I said before, your thumb needs to be about 2.5 inches. In my case, this meant I needed to cast on 10 stitches and we're going to cast on the stitches on both ends because as you've seen we're going to fold our work in half so you need sort of a front thumb and a back thumb on both sides. So my first row I'm just going to knit as normal until I get to the end. Once I get to the end I'm going to cast on these stitches and I simply do this by folding them over like this so I kind of create this loop that I place on my needle and I pull it tight. It's super super straightforward. Once I've done that I'm just going to knit those extra stitches as they are now part of my row. Once you've reached the end of that row you're then going to cast on that same amount of stitches again. So again here I'm casting on 10 stitches and I'm just knitting as normal just to continue my pattern on and you can see here that on both sides I've added on more stitches now if you are changing colors like I am you will see that once it's time to use your second color it will sort of drag along a little bit that is absolutely fine because you will be able to tuck this when you're sewing together the edge of your mitten so just make sure that when you're dragging your yarn along that you're leaving enough so that it doesn't create such a big amount of tension so I kind of just like to fold the yarn all along my work don't pull it all the way across kind of leave a bit of room that when you are sewing the edge of the mitten you have enough room to tuck in this yarn as well continue knitting until you've kind of reached like an inch and a half maybe a bit more than one inch and a half and then you're going to cast off the exact amount of stitches that you've just previously cast on so the way i cast off is i will knit a stitch place it back on my left needle and kind of feed the previous stitch over again i will leave a more detailed tutorial on how to do this cast on below for you whatever row you're working on currently where you've just cast off your first side of thumb stitches continue that row all the way till the end turn your work and on the next row you're then going to cast off your second side of stitches same as before if you are changing color and you're dragging your yarn across just make sure you're leaving enough room and not pulling it too tight and then again you can continue working on your mitten until you've reached a total of eight inches from the bottom to where you are right now now it's time to split our work in half so just count again how many stitches are on your needle split them in half and we're going to work on the front of the mitten and the back of the mitten in order to figure out how much you need to decrease over how many rows, you can refer to these calculations. So you can actually use your current mitten sort of as a swatch, measure how many stitches get you to a certain length and refer this to these measurements. Then the way that I like to decrease is if you're decreasing on the right hand side, I like to just slip the first stitch, knit the second stitch and then slip the previous stitch over. Whenever you have a decrease row, you want to do your decrease on both sides during the same row. Then when I get to the end of my row, I just knit the last two stitches together. I turn my work over and I'm just gonna continue my pattern as normal. Keep going with your decreases until you've reached your last row. And this is where you can then just cast off your remaining stitches. Do the same for the other side of your mitten. You can just cast on your yarn again and continue the same decreasing pattern as you've done previously. And you've essentially finished the entire body of your mitten. Now we just need to seam the edge so you can fold your work in half. Using a crochet hook, you're going to go right into the edge, cast on your yarn, and you're just going to slip stitch into every single adjacent stitch. And yeah, you're just going to slip stitch all the way around your mitten until you've reached the bottom. And then you can use a darning needle or your crochet hook to just tie in those loose ends. I like to kind of go back and forth just to make sure that everything is nice and neat. There you go, you have completed the mitten. Look how adorable it is. I really like the pattern it's created as well, but I can really see how this works in multiple different colors and stitches as well. 
well. I really, really love these mittens. I know I said last week when I made the bonnets that the bonnets were my favourite project so far, but I feel like the mittens might have taken over. They just are the cutest gift ever. And they actually bring a lot of warmth. I also love how they just sort of peek out, like a jumper you're wearing or a coat you're wearing. It just adds like a little bit of colour, a little bit of intrigue to an outfit. I mean, look at them. Literally just look at them. They are so adorable. You bet I will be making these in multiple colours and different patterns. I really, really do love this pattern. I also feel like if you're looking for some extra, extra warmth, making them in complete garter stitch, I think will make them even more solid and really, really nice and warm. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this one. We have one more coming next week. That will be the final gift idea video. And then it's pretty much December um, and Christmas is basically here, which is just insane. I'm so excited for Christmas. I can't wait. I always try and hold off with Christmas decorations and getting the tree until literally the start of December. So next week I'm gonna get my tree, I'm gonna decorate. And it has also been getting colder, so I will be wearing my mittens for sure. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. We hit 7,000 subscribers this week, which is mind blowing. Um, yeah, I'm so thankful. Yeah, thank you so much for everyone who has been subscribing, who's been watching along and commenting. I really appreciate it. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.